If you are looking for an options swing trade strategy that makes sense, let's talk. As you can see in this graph, after hours trading can offer much more opportunity. When developing an options strategy, there are a few things that you must consider. When are you getting in and when are you getting out of that trade? Maybe I'll double down, it's gotta come back. When it comes to buying calls and puts, time is definitely not on your side. Hey, you need to consider your risk tolerance. I need to do a video on that. But this will allow you to place a trade that you're comfortable with. Because I prefer short-term trades, I tend to trade overnight. Yes, I could trade during the day. However, there's a big obstacle when it comes to trading during the day, and it's me. Create a strangle so I can then straddle the directional of the put to three to five ratio. Yeah, that, that'll work, that, that'll work. And perhaps you have the same day trading problem that I have, except it's you. Perhaps you're like me, you don't like staring at the stock market all day, and two, you know that your emotions will get the best of you. Seriously, this is why most day traders fail. Not because they're incompetent, but because they make bad moves out of boredom, or they react due to fear of missing out. Greed, fear, you name the emotion, that is what's taking out day traders. And until you can get that under control, you need to find another option. Hey, when it goes down, it, it really, it always comes back up. It does, really. You'll see. A successful day trader has a system or a setup that works more times than not. Plus, they're consistent and disciplined. So this is the big reason why I like to overnight swing trade. It makes sense. I buy at the close, and then I can't overreact. I can't let my emotions get the best of me, and I can't make stupid moves because I'm bored. I have to wait until the morning to close out my positions. There are a lot of creative approaches to trading options. Now, some are really high risk, and of course, there can be great reward with them. And some are very consistent and offer regular returns. But of course, those returns aren't quite as high. Yeah, they see my call. That's why the whole market's going down. I like to keep it simple and only trade a couple strategies. One is directional, meaning I only buy a call or a put. I'm going the direction that my indicator is suggesting. Now, I could have an amazing gain, or I could lose half my money, or even all my money. But the thing is, you'll never lose more than what you put in. It's also important to consider your position size. I never recommend you sell options contracts unless you have the securities or the money to back it up. In other words, don't go naked. And of course, my other one is part of what I refer to as my SPY T strategy. They're ratios. They're kind of like straddle and strangle ratios. Let me show you how I buy them. First is my SPY T A strategy. With this strategy, you can make more money than the other ones. However, you can have a greater loss but there's still a protective put. What I do is I buy two calls in or near the money, and then one put at the same or approximately the same price or strike. The other two options are also a two to one ratio, except you buy one call in one put. For the SPY TB, you would buy an option at the money and then buy a put about half price. Of course, if your indicator says down, you would buy the put at the money and the call at half price. For SPY TC, we go a little bit more in the money and look for that two to one ratio. If your indicator says up, well then buy a call at say this price and buy the put at half the price. As I mentioned, you can make more profit with SPY TA. SPY TB and C are very similar, but SPY TB offers a little bit more profit opportunity. However, I tend to like SPY TC because it seems a little more consistent and easier to handle. I love going directional when things are going well. However, that protection put or call keeps us in the game. Now, how well does it keep us in the game? How much does it protect us? It really depends on the volatility of the market. And that volatility can affect the theta. And of course, it's going to be a lot better than if you went directional, 
but you do need to prepare and you do need to consider your position size. Next is developing your signal. Now you could flip a coin, but I don't recommend that. Give yourself a little advantage, do some tests, find some correlations to how the market closes or specific indicators, and then how the market opens the next day. Here are a few ideas. So get out a spreadsheet and test these ideas out for a few weeks. Consider some of the spy stocks. Apple is the number one position. What is Apple doing and how might that correlate to the next day's opening? Compare the last tick of the day to how the market opened the next morning. Consider the volume and price action of the market. Take a look at some daily technical indicators and see how they work the next morning. Keep an eye on the options flow. What's the big money doing with SPY? Maybe track what happens after the market closes and then how it opens up the next day. Hey, take a Twitter poll during the last hour. And of course, always consider, no matter what your indicator says, expected news after the market closes and before the market opens the next day. So my approach is an overnight swing trade using a two to one options ratio and of course the SPY tomorrow indicator. So what's your favorite swing trade? Put it in the comments below. Well, maybe a strangle, straddle, butterfly, broken wing, you know, call series with, you know, a, a put to protect, well, I'll sell the puts and then buy the calls to do my strangle, straddle series. And then, then I'll just sell everything at once. Yeah.